Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to make a round pillow using a crocheted motif, well actually two motifs, and of course you can use this project with any round motif that you have. I do have a tutorial on this particular pattern and I'll put a link to that below. But what I'm showing you in this tutorial is how to create the pillow form for this motif or any motif that you like. And I'll also show you how you can join the two motifs together using this beautiful stitch here. And I'll give you an option to join with a single crochet stitch. So yeah, this is just a really lovely project, fun and super simple. So let's get started. All right, I'm sorry if this is a bit out of focus. I just can't get the camera to focus and it doesn't like all these different colors so the light really sucks too. So the supplies you'll need for this project are two crocheted motifs. You want your front motif and your back motif and you can make them the same pattern. You can use different patterns. You can do any motif you like. And I do have a tutorial on how to do this granny square motif, which is really lovely. It has 10 rounds and it measures 13 inches in diameter. I finished both the front and the back in the same color so that I can join it together using the one color. And then you will need some fabric to make the pillow form. So whatever fabric that you like. If you already have a pillow form, then you can adjust the motif to fit the pillow form. The nice thing about making your own pillow form is that you can make the pillow form to fit the motif. And that's what we're going to do. So any fabric that you like. And I will be joining these two motifs together using a sewing method. So you'll need some yarn and a darning needle. If by chance you want to use a crochet stitch to join these together, of course you'll need a crochet hook for that. And I do have a tutorial for this project here that will show you how you can crochet using a single crochet to join the motifs together. Then we're going to make the pillow form and I'm going to use a sewing machine to join the, that together. And in this tutorial, it shows you how you can hand stitch if you don't have a sewing machine. So you will need some sewing thread, some straight pins, a sewing needle. You'll need that regardless whether you have a machine or not because you have to finish the opening with a hand stitch. And you'll need some fabric scissors. If you have them, pinking shears are helpful. You'll need a pen, a measuring uh, device, a tape measure or a ruler to measure your seam allowance. And then this is just a handy little tool that you can use to uh, pop the seam out to flatten the seam when you turn your pillow inside out and it just gives a nice finish for the seam. You can use a chopstick or the end of a pen or pencil like that. And I think that is everything that you need. Oh, one more thing, stuffing, stuffing. And then you need some sort of filling for your pillow and you can use any filling that you like. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to pin your motif to the fabric and you want to lay the fabric right sides together with two layers of fabric and pin your motif down nice and flat and then you can use your ruler and simply draw the pattern around the motif using the motif as a guide. Now you can create a seam allowance any way you like. I am going to create a seam allowance of a half an inch and then add a quarter of an inch to make the pillow a little bit bigger. So I'm going to do a quarter of an inch to make the pillow bigger and a half inch for the seam allowance. So I'm, I am adding three quarters of an inch all the way around and just using the ruler as a guide to mark that all the way around. All right, and then you just want to remove the pins and there you go. You have your pattern right there. And then just put the pins back in to hold the fabric in place because we're going to be cutting this pattern out. 
So pin that all the way around and then you're just going to cut the motif out following the, your markings. All right, so there's the pillow pattern. So you can either take this to the sewing machine or hand stitch your half inch seam allowance all the way around and you wanna leave an opening that's big enough to add your stuffing. I'm gonna make it so my hand can fit in. So just finish with a back stitch so you have a nice secure finish there. So go ahead and do that and we'll see you when you get back. All right, so I've sewn the seam allowance and this is where you can either use the pinking shears if you have them, um, but if not, just use your regular fabric scissors. And I like to leave the opening with a bigger seam allowance and I like to trim the excess fabric. So I'm just going to trim off about a quarter of an inch and then you trim it all the way around to a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit here. I'll just snip this off. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go around every inch or so and do a little V snip. And you're snipping out a little bit of fabric. And what that does is it removes the bulk fabric. So when you turn a round shape into itself, all this extra fabric would buck, buckle in. So you wanna remove as much of that as possible by doing these little V snips all the way around, making sure not to snip your stitching there. You wanna be really careful. Or you can just use the pinking shears and just trim all the way around with the pinking shears. And that's what I'm going to do. All right, so you can see here where I just trimmed with the pinking shears to trim the edge and I left this little tab for the, you know, the opening. So just turn the pillow inside out and, and I did leave it big enough so that I could get my hand in there comfortably and just push that around. And this is where a chopstick or a tool like this is nice because you just go into the pillow and you can just run it along the seam allowance there and it just pops the seam out because um, a, a pillow like this is hard to iron. And, and of course this pillow is going to be encased in crochet and it doesn't have to be perfect but it just creates a nice finish a nice neat finish and so once you've pushed your seam out like that then you can go ahead and fill the pillow and I suggest making it as plump as you possibly can. All right so once you have the pillow nice and filled you wanna close up your opening and you can either run a, a stitch with a sewing machine, just do a thin little stitch cause it'll be inside the pillow form um, or I'll show you how you can hand sew it. So I have two strands of thread here. What I like to do to create a knot is I just wet my index finger, put the threads between my finger and thumb, do one wrap and then roll that thread together like that and that creates a nice little knot. You can do a knot any way you like, that's just how I do it. So you just wanna put your needle in to the right side here. I'm right-handed so I'll work from the right to the left. So just get the needle started in the end. And what we're going to do, it's called either an invisible stitch or a ladder stitch. And what you do is you just bring your needle in under the fold of the fabric about a quarter of an inch or so and pull that through and then go to the adjacent side and put the needle in through the fold of the fabric on the other side about a quarter of an inch and then go over to the adjacent side and repeat that going under the fold and you just repeat that all the way along. Oopsie, got a little tangled there until you get to the end and then you just tie it off with a knot at the end. All right, so you wanna start with your motifs wrong side together. And the way you tell that is the right side has sort of a flat finish on the last round and the wrong side has sort of this more curly finish. You can see that's more obviously the back. So putting the wrong sides together, you're going to get a length of thread 
and you're going to join in going from the left to the right and just darn in your tail end. And I put a little knot in the tail end of this. Um, and so just darn in going from the left to the right and uh, joining that into the back motif. So then you'll put your needle in from the mat going into the top loop of the back motif. Just that one loop you're picking up and bring the needle in from the back and pull the yarn through there. And then you'll bring your front motif together and bring the yar yarn over, the needle over and coming in from the front of the motif, picking up the top loop from the front of the motif and then go over to the next loop in the back motif going into that top loop and bring the stitch through. And this is a whip stitch. And we're just working into the top loops only. So bring the needle into the front motif, picking up the top loop, and then going into the back motif of with the top loop and bring the yarn through. And this is such an easy stitch and it's really pretty. So again, coming into the front motif and picking up the top loop of the back motif and just like that. And so you're just going to continue to stitch that all the way around. Okay, so you can see how nicely that is joining the two motifs together. And it's creating this nice little ridge and that's by going into the top loop of the stitch that gives you that nice ridge. So once you come to the end of your yarn, what you want to do is you want to come around and do your last stitch into the front motif, picking up the front loop of the front motif or the top loop of the front motif, and then go ahead and darn in your tail end into the front motif. And so you can finish this off in the front motif and you can just darn in one way and then go back in the other direction and then fasten that off. And then you're going to join on your new thread, a new piece, and this is why I like to put a knot in it because I wanna come from the left to the right and just go in the one direction and then bring the needle up through the back motif through that top loop. And then you would carry on doing the stitch all the way along. And uh, so I hope that makes sense. So you can see that you're joining on the back motif. So carry on stitching all the way around until you've stitched this about three quarters of the way around so we can put the pillow form in. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so here I've gone about three quarters of the way around and put the pillow form in. And so now we're just going to carry on stitching the motifs closed in the same way around the pillow form now and just doing the whip stitch working your way around and joining on yarn as needed and I'll see you at the end. So coming to the end you should have the two stitches left one in the front and one in the back or these loops I guess and so then you're going to bring the stitch down and sorry I'm almost off camera here but just bring it down into the front motif and just do one more last stitch there and you see how nicely that finishes that off and then I'm darning back you can't see but I'm darning back underneath uh, the fabric going in in the other direction just like that and then just snip your tail end off and now my light has totally changed here it's full-on sun and my camera's not liking this and I think I can zoom out one more there we go and so there you go and then you just sort of have to plump it up and sort of shape it and form uh, form it in uh, into a nice shape um there you go that is how to do a round pillow with crochet and making your own pillow form to the size that you like.
Isn't that just so adorable? I love this. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. We'll see you next time.